Happy Thursday, September 19th, 2024. We've got a lot of weather to talk about. First of all, we have a continued discussion on this beautiful swirling storm up here in Canada and the northern portion of the United States. This is going to cause a lot of problems today. But we also have to really spend some time talking about the Caribbean. Last night, a lot of the forecast models started really latching on to a potentially significant situation down here as our next big hurricane might be trying to to form over the next 10 days or so. But first, before we start talking about the long-term forecast, let's talk about the short-term forecast. Today, there's 8 million who are looking at the very real threat for some hail, some wind, and some tornadoes. This includes Kansas City. This includes Overland Park, Des Moines, St. Paul, Minneapolis. All you guys in the slight risk here are looking at the very real potential for mainly some large hail, but we've also got a risk for wind and tornadoes as well. The tornado Tornado risk specifically is focused a little bit farther to the north. The rest of that risk area is mostly driven by a wind threat. But as you can see, we've got a 5% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point within that brown area today, and that includes Minneapolis. That's the what and the where. Let's talk about the wind. This is what the radar could look like today around 2 p.m. Eastern. Not a lot going on, but if I slide this forward just a little bit, you can see an explosion of convection happening in southern Minnesota into portions of northern Iowa. Iowa around 3 or 4 p.m. Eastern today, and this is going to be the beginning of what will become our severe weather situation that unfolds from portions of Canada all the way down into the south central U.S. I think the prime time for severe weather, especially around Minneapolis and where we expect to see the highest chance of potentially seeing some tornadoes, is going to be right around 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central, right in that time period. Now, there's obviously the farther east you are, the more into the overnight periods this threat goes, but the tornado threat's going to start to go down a little bit as the wind threat goes up as this becomes mostly a linear system. Also, right at the beginning of these storms popping up, we have a very big hail risk. I would be uh, looking out for some hail as far south as into Des Moines and Kansas City, but the main threat for most people that get hit by storms tonight, it's going to be the damaging winds, so make sure you are prepared for that. Have a way of getting warnings, but otherwise, don't be scared. Be prepared. This is just your typical fall severe weather setup. As as we go into tomorrow, we are going to see a little bit of a re-sparking of storms in the Ohio Valley over towards the Great Lakes on the eastern side of Chicago, but it's not going to be anything like today, and in fact, it might not even warrant a slight risk of severe weather. However, I wouldn't be surprised to see some hail and some wind, so we'll be keeping an eye on that, but the main threat is going to be today. Looking even further into the future, our storm that's causing the severe weather troubles today is going to be out of our hair pretty quickly. Uh, we're not going to think about it too much after tomorrow. After that, we're going to enter a fairly quiet period of weather for the weekend. However, we are going to see quite a bit of rain and a couple of thunderstorms in the Midwest back and towards the central U.S. where we might see some flooding problems in places like Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and northern Missouri. However, it doesn't look like a huge deal to me. We are going to see some snow, several chances of snow in the higher elevations of Colorado and Wyoming, and we're just going to continue to see lots of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico kind of slam into this somewhat stationary boundary and cause recurring rain systems, okay? And some of that is going to make it down into more central and southern parts of Texas, but the vast majority of it misses Texas for the most part. And then if we keep going, of course, we see another big ridge forming in the west. Things are going to start warming back up after a period of cool weather. <laughs> you know, we're going back to the warm side. It's the roller coaster we call fall. We are really getting into that. And also another thing that comes with fall is continued chances for hurricanes. Yeah, so as little as six days from now, the GFS uh, predicts that there's going to be a, somewhat of a tropical system cross over the Yucatan Peninsula, get into the very warm and unstable waters of the Gulf of Mexico, and very quickly form into a hurricane and rocket up into the Gulf Coast as potentially a major hurricane. Now, you are probably going to hear a lot about this, especially if you watch a lot of people who talk about the weather, especially if you follow people on social media who talk about the weather, you're going to hear about this. Right now, obviously, the GFS is painting a very concerning looking situation and it looks good on, on the imagery. It looks crazy, but we've got to remember that this could be gone tomorrow. We're still pretty far out from this being a real thing that we have to be hyper concerned about. Now it is 10 or 11 days out. So all of the models are 
starting to converge on the idea that we are going to have a storm in the Gulf. Is it going to be a major hurricane? I don't know, and neither does anybody else. However, this is something that we cannot ignore, right? The fact that we're seeing this on the 6Z GFS, and if we go back just one model run, the 0Z, this is what got everybody, every meteorologist was freaking out last night looking at this. We've got essentially a superstorm predicted by the GFS here, way out in the 230, 250 hour range, moving up into portions of the Gulf. But we don't know for sure that this is going to happen. And if you're new to like looking at weather models and stuff, and a lot of people here on the channel are, this happens every year. Every year there is a super storm that's predicted by the GFS. And obviously it's not every year that we have a super storm. So this is something that we can't ignore, but also we should not be panicked about it. It's just one of those things where if you've got interests along the coast, same thing I was saying yesterday, you should definitely keep an eye on this, have a plan in place just in case this is the real deal. If this is the real deal, then hey, we've got 12, 13 days of lead time. You've got plenty of time to prepare. But look at how all over the place the models are, the GEFS and the European ensembles. This is like a bunch of different models put together to try to help us figure out where the averages are. I mean, these spaghetti noodles are all over the place. There is no one path that we're certain that it's going to take. There's also not one path of intensity that we know that it's going to take. So some of these models suggest that this is going to be a weak hurricane that just kind of floats around and brings some rain to Texas. Some of them predict a category five slamming into portions of Florida. So it could be anything from a weak depression to a very strong storm. The reason I'm talking about it at all right now is because the thing that I'm pretty certain of is that we are going to have a storm in the Gulf. That's 100% on the table. What happens once it gets past the Yucatan Peninsula and into the actual Gulf of Mexico? Where does it go from there? How quickly does it intensify? Does it come up towards the states? Does it fizzle out over the ocean as it gets elongated by a trough? Those are the questions that we will have to answer in the future. And just don't let anybody scare you, okay? There's going to be lots of hype, lots of talk. And of course, if there are major developments concerning the storm, I will let you know. One thing we are sure of is there's going to be quite a bit of rain in northern Missouri, eastern portions of Nebraska, southern portions of Iowa over the next seven days. This is where all the rain is going to fall over the next seven days. So this kind of gives you an idea of what the general weather pattern is going to be like over the next week. Same thing for this graphic here, six to 10 day temperature outlook. Things are going to be warming up in the west after a period of cooler weather, and things are going to be staying quite warm uh, in the northern and uh, northeastern portions of the U.S. as well. And near normal, we're warming up a little bit in the southeast as well. 50% probability of us going live today, okay? It's, um, I, I don't see it unless we get an upgrade from the Storm Prediction Center on that tornado uh, probability. I don't think that we'll go live, but we're going to be here and we're going to be ready to go just in case. So turn on notifications, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you this evening or tomorrow or whenever the next video is. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh. In 2024, thousands of lives will be uprooted by extreme weather events like hurricanes hurricanes, tornadoes, and floods. And while many communities will wait for federal support, the Y'all Squad will already be on the ground. Our mission is to be there before anyone else, helping in the aftermath of a disaster. Our focus is on the essentials, bringing food, supplies, and satellite internet right to those who need it most, ensuring that no one faces the aftermath alone. Please visit our website, theyallsquad.org, to donate now. Your donation, whether one-time or recurring, empowers us to deliver aid fast to those who face the challenges presented by recovering from a disaster. During those crucial moments, right after a storm, when people are picking up the pieces and trying to figure out their next steps, the Y'all Squad will be there ready to help, all thanks to you.